Yellowstone was falling apart until one underestimated wolf changed everything. He was the smallest in the group, quiet, pushed around by the other wolves. Nobody thought he would become a leader, and definitely not a legend. But when he first stepped into Yellowstone National Park in 1995, everything changed. This quiet, overlooked wolf would find purpose, fall in love, and spark a ripple effect that would bring Yellowstone National Park back from the brink of collapse. Now, I don't know about you, but in my opinion, that sounds like quite an exciting tale. This is the story of Wolf 8M. Gray wolves are native to Yellowstone National Park, but in the early 1900s, wolves were driven out of Yellowstone, not by accident, but by design. They were seen as dangerous and destructive. Ranchers blamed them for livestock losses, often more than they actually caused, and people even saw them as a threat to humans. The name the Big Bad Wolf comes to mind here because people saw wolves not as just animals, but as villains. With government support, wolves were poisoned, shot, and trapped until the last of them vanished from the park by 1926. The howls of wolves disappeared, and Yellowstone fell silent. Without wolves, Yellowstone began to unravel in a devastating chain reaction. For the wolves of Yellowstone, one of their primary food sources came from hunting elk. But with the wolves away, the elks will play. And by play, I mean feast and make babies. So many babies. Elk populations soared. In fact, their population more than doubled after the wolves disappeared. With no predators to scare them, the elk camped out in valleys and riverbanks, lying around while grazing and grazing and grazing. The elk ate grass, trees, and shrubs, munching these plants down before they really even had a chance to grow. This overgrazing triggered a domino effect. Turns out, we need these plants for so many reasons. Without them, there were less shelter for animals like mice and rabbits, fewer berries for bears to eat, fewer flowers for pollinators, and songbirds lost their nesting grounds. As a result, the population of all these animals began to decline, and that was just the start of it. The worst devastation was at the riverbanks. With no wolves to fear, elk gathered in huge herds along the banks, trampling the soil and eroding sediment into the water. With all this dirt in the rivers, fish lost clean water. Without trees and clean water, beavers couldn't build their dams. And without beaver dams to slow the rivers, amphibians and otters started to have a hard time as well. Without wolves, the ecosystem wasn't just out of balance. It was falling apart. As you can imagine, when people started to see the scope of disaster that came without wolves, we looked at it and said, Damn, we messed up, and then tried to fix it. In 1995, 14 gray wolves from Alberta and British Columbia, Canada were brought to Yellowstone as part of a bold reintroduction effort. They were held in acclimation pens for 10 weeks, forming bonds and adjusting to their new environment. And then they were released into the wild. And among them was our unlikely but beloved hero, 8M. Now, much of what we know about Yellowstone's wolves, especially 8M, come from a man named Rick McIntyre, a wildlife biologist who spent more than 15 years observing them in the field. His book, named The Rise of Wolf 8, is one of the most detailed and moving accounts of wolf behavior ever written, and it captures the heart of Yellowstone's most unexpected alpha. I wanted to touch on him briefly because much of the information on Wolf 8 in this video comes from him, especially the information that's about to follow in this next section. Now, on with the story. 8M was smaller than the others. Young, inexperienced, overshadowed, and picked on. But he had something that couldn't be measured. Patience, loyalty, and quiet strength waiting to be unleashed. He just needed someone to see the potential in him. When he was released, he paired with a wolf named 9F, an older, experienced alpha female with pups, who had tragically just lost her mate. 9F accepted 8 into the family, which was a big deal. For one thing, wolves live in a matriarchal society, so it is the females who call the shots, 
And in addition, alpha females are very, very particular about who they choose as their mate. I mean, it is going to determine the survival and future of the pack, after all. Before bonding, females watch how males interact with pups, contribute to hunts, defend the group, and behave around rivals. A male like 8M, who was gentle with the pups and fiercely protective of the family, would have proven himself through showing 9F who he truly was. In other words, 9F saw something special in this scraggly, young, and experienced wolf. And so she made him her mate. I feel like this is the equivalent in those movies where the super nerdy, awkward kid gets to go to prom with the beautiful, popular cheerleader girl. Anyway, just like that, this young and experienced wolf became an alpha, tasked with protecting, training, and raising a massive litter. And he rose to the challenge, protecting them fiercely from rivals and never backing down, even though he probably had absolutely no idea what he was doing in the beginning. One of these pups was Wolf 21, who grew up under 8's guidance and carried on his legacy, eventually becoming a legendary alpha himself. Now, something I really love learning is that Wolf 21 and Wolf 8 both had remarkable restraint when it came to facing rivals. One day, a powerful male wolf approached 8M's territory, threatening his mate and his pups. 8M didn't hesitate. He charged into the fight, outmatched in size, but not in resolve. He pinned the intruder, and he could have ended it right there. But curiously, he didn't. Instead, he let the rival go. Watching nearby was his adopted son, 21M. And that moment, an act of mercy in the middle of a fight, stuck with him. Years later, when 21 became an alpha himself, he carried the same code of conduct with him. He never killed another opponent. Not once. This is especially remarkable when you consider how important and delicate the population of Yellowstone's wolves were at this time. If 8M and 21 had been ruthless, merciless leaders, things could have worked out very differently for the reintroduction of wolves. 8M's story isn't just about rising to leadership. It's about the kind of leader he chose to be. One rooted in loyalty, restraint, and quiet strength. He helped raise a family, pass on values, and stabilize a pack at a time when Yellowstone's future was still uncertain. But his impact didn't stop with his family, because when the wolves came back to Yellowstone, they brought much more than their howls with them. They brought change, much desperately needed change. A little about wolves here. They are endurance hunters. They don't chase everything. They go after mostly the weak, the young, and the old, especially when it comes to elk, their primary prey in Yellowstone. Usually, a single wolf doesn't take down an elk alone, either. Packs usually work together, and it takes teamwork, strategy, and patience. They circle, drive the herd into where they want it to be, and wait for the right moment to strike. This behavior does much more than just thin out elk numbers, too. It changes elk behavior. No longer could herds lounge around for days by the rivers and streams. With wolves around, they had to stay alert and keep moving. This movement healed the rivers and allowed the willows and aspens to regrow. This brought back the beavers and slowed the streams. It brought back the birds, the frogs, and most importantly, the balance. That is the power of something known as a trophic cascade, when a top predator changes the entire food web from the top down. The impact was an instant, of course, but it actually didn't take long. Within just a few years of the wolves returning, elk began to change their behavior, avoiding the open valleys and stream banks where they were once untouchable. Over the next two decades, Yellowstone began to heal, faster and more powerfully than anyone expected. And 8M helped set it all in motion. I mean, when you think about it, it kind of sucks for the elk because they were just chilling, having a great time, and now they have to worry about survival again, but it's good for the ecosystem, so... Eh. The story of 8M and his family tells us that wolves are so much more than just predators. They are the glue that holds Yellowstone together. And they make up real families with principles, hardship, and love. 8M didn't start as a leader, 
but through loyalty, partnership, and resilience, he became one. His pack raised pups, held territory, passed on knowledge, and proved that wolves weren't villains after all. They were vital. Today, Yellowstone is one of the best studied ecosystems on the planet, and the return of wolves is considered to be one of the most successful wildlife reintroductions in history. Because it wasn't just about restoring the wolves, it was about restoring a whole world. He wasn't the biggest or the loudest. In fact, he was the one no one expected. And yet, he rose to greatness and helped heal an entire landscape. It's easy to overlook quiet strength, but maybe that's exactly where real change truly begins. Because when the wolves returned, they brought back the rivers, the trees, the beavers, the birds, and the balance. And all of it started with one quiet wolf. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. And if you really liked it, you might want to check out my video on Jackie and Shadow, the world famous eagles madly in love, who have faced all kinds of obstacles together. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.